Hey everybody, and welcome to Steelbook Obsessed. My name is Jake, and just last night, I went and saw Alien Romulus. I was so very excited to go and see it. I love Fede Alvarez. I think he made a great remake with Evil Dead. I think that Don't Breathe is one of the best horror movies to come out in the past 10 years. I think that movie is absolute perfection. So when I found out that he was going to direct an Aliens movie, are you kidding me? That sounds amazing. Sign me up day one. Wasn't able to go day one. Was able to go opening weekend though because I did not want anything to be spoiled. I wanted to go into that theater knowing as little as possible and now that I know what I know now, um, I'm just bummed. <laughs> I'm just, normally, I don't have like big negative reactions. But when I got done with Alien Romulus, I was just kind of seething. I was just like, why did he decide to go this route with this franchise? I'm going to go into spoilers here very soon. If you saw the movie and you like it, that is great. I know the majority of people that I follow over on Letterboxd, they had a very fun time with this movie. I just did not get on board, and I will give you a lot of bullet points as to why I didn't like the way that this movie went. If you like these type of movie breakdowns, positive, negative, all that stuff, make sure you like, follow, subscribe, all that fun stuff. Greatly appreciated. But now let's dig in deep into Alien Romulus, because... Uh, it's a tale of two movies for me, honestly. I think the first 30 minutes, I was all on board for. I loved seeing, again, spoilers for here on out. If you have not seen the movie, go see it first and then watch this movie, especially if you didn't like the movie. Because I feel like I'm going to get a lot of negative comments in this video, but it is what it is. And I feel like I have to share my feelings on this because I feel very strongly about why this wasn't the right move for the franchise. I let, let's just get in. So the first half hour of this movie, I was a fan of. I really liked the relationship between Rain and Andy. I really liked the first 10 minutes of just the world building of Alien. Looked a little bit reminiscent of like a lot of futuristic um, dystopian worlds that we've seen before. Remind me a lot of like a Blade Runner-esque type movie. Um, but I was liking what I was seeing. It was just rain trying to get off the planet, trying to go to a planet that has any type of sunlight whatsoever. Um, you get these like dream um, cuts in the film as well, just to be like, this is what I want. This is my goal is to just get a better life for me and the people that I care about, which again, I, it's a very um, easy thing for everybody to get behind. I, I will say that, but it works. And uh, Rain and Andy, I still feel like through the majority of this film, I enjoyed their relationship. Even though Andy, we find out 10 minutes in that he is a replicant. There's a big history with replicants in the Alien franchise. I enjoy Ash. I enjoy Bishop. I enjoy David. Watch me. I'll do the fingering. Like all three of them, I feel like bring something new to the table and... It's kind of like a uh, um, a gender, not a gender issue, a race issue almost, like treating them as they're not humans. In this case, they are not humans, but just trying to uh, see any differences there are and um, uh, kind of treat them accordingly to where some of these characters have those feelings. And I really liked where they were going with this one, with this movie. I thought that that character... Um, he got me right out of the gate. I feel like the first 15, 20 minutes really is just like, okay, we have a mission. We want to get off this planet. We are a ragtag group. We aren't on a mission. We are creating our own mission to make a better world for ourselves. Again, very relatable. I enjoyed that aspect of it. Then we go up to the ship. And uh, that's when, you know, they do a lot of the space exploration stuff within the station. A classic alien, all that stuff. Um... Doesn't go wrong. I enjoyed when they got into their first little hiccup on the road to um, where all of the, the the little crawly guys, this guy over here, there's a ton of them. I loved the amount of face huggers that we got in here that were crawling around and swimming in the water everywhere. I'm like, okay, this is very, very cool. I'm on board. Let's keep this sucker going. But the longer this sucker kept going, the more I'm like... 
this feels hollow. This feels like I'm at a theme park. This feels like I am on Aliens, the ride, the movie. And that's not really where I wanted this to go. Um, one, one reason why I felt this way is because the longer the movie went, the more one-dimensional the characters felt. It just felt like they were there to die and they did not have a lot of motivations around what they were trying to do. They all wanted to get off the planet, for sure. And that's a very um, rudimentary way of uh, getting your plot to start and continue. But when you just have someone on there because they're pregnant and you just have someone on there because he's a bad guy, like uh, there's a lot of just like one dimensional routes that these characters never are able to evolve from. They're just uh, shticks. And I'm, I'm not a fan of when characters are just there to like not do much. The sci-fi genre is um, one to where like you can explore a whole bunch of things. And I know this one is going more of like the horror route and I'm a big fan of the horror genre as well. And there are a lot of uh, characteristics in the horror slasher genre that I, I think they tried to milk a little bit into this alien franchise. And for me, it didn't, it did not work whatsoever. The, the, the multiplication of xenomorphs, the multiplication of face huggers in here just felt watered down by the end. To the fact to where like you're literally playing a light gun game at the end. You're really you're literally playing like an on-rail shooter of a gun that focuses in on okay, all you gotta do is point the gun and it'll focus on you and it'll shoot. You only have 400 rounds. It shows the rounds like continuously going out and just her like mowing down xenomorphs, mowing down face huggers. I hated that. I absolutely hated that. I didn't like the way it was filmed either. Normally, Fetty Alvarez, like I said, to me, with Evil Dead. And with Don't Breathe, great top tier horror for me. This one did not do it. He filmed it a little bit like he did with Evil Dead with like the weird camera angles, the, the weird quick zoom ins. And it just didn't, didn't work whatsoever. Um, the, the, the floating venom all over, it, very cool. That's never been, that's never happened in the Alien franchise before to where like they're bobbing and weaving the, the venom in the acid because there's no gravity. Cool concept there. But again, just felt very theme parkish. It just felt like a 10 second thrill. And that's what this movie came down to. It was like a 100 minute adrenaline rush that to me wore very thin very quickly. I wanted, I wanted more character depth. I, I wanted more story. And this was just not, not giving me what I wanted it to. And I'm still bummed. I'm still bummed about it, if you can tell from what <laughs> my just attitude from when I'm filming this. So we've touched a little bit on the replicant issue. Um, this was another big misstep for me. I, I get how this could work possibly when you're writing the script, but final execution just fell flat on its face. And that is re-bringing back the character of Ash. He is such a memorable character in that first film. And then he just kind of uh, doesn't get touched upon in the entire franchise afterwards. And I, I get how you would want to bring that character back to kind of flesh out some more of what he had to offer in that original film. But the face mapping, that's the thing that kind of threw me off of it. And it's another thing that kind of made this feel like a theme park attraction. He looked like an animatronic. His face looked like it was AI'd on. I did not like the look of Ash. It didn't look like what he used to look like in the 79 version. And at the end of the day, if you can't pull that off, I don't think you should put it in the movie. I, I, I think that great idea for a concept. It's just the final products that we got just, again, took me out of the movie. It did not engross me in the film. It did not make me want to stay in the world it just made me realize oh i i'm sitting in a chair watching a movie i'm not enthralled in what's actually going on in the movie and i i love getting sucked into new worlds when i'm watching film it's just this again just made me realize how much of a uh, um um a, a, like a, a thrill ride amusement park attraction this movie is also, I touched upon the pregnancy aspect of the movie, and you always knew in the back of your head, like, they wouldn't bring this character up being pregnant if they weren't going to pay this off in some way. 
And uh, wouldn't you know it, the, the like the black goo that was in Prometheus makes a reappearance in Alien Romulus and um, kind of uh, evolves. They're, they're trying to do another evolution of the Xenomorph. This pregnant woman then gets attacked by a Xenomorph, is attached on the wall like uh, we've seen countless times in the franchise, gets off, not dead, um, ends up dying during birth and uh yeah what i guess she she doesn't die during birth but she ends up getting killed by her uh offspring for sure and uh fetty alvarez again he is uh he he likes the goopy he, he likes to get really messed up when it comes to certain things i remember the turkey baster and don't breathe there are a couple instances in evil dead but here you actually like see the the birthing process happen on screen and um i would say that like actually being part of that for uh my children it comes very close to seeing like what that kind of sort of looks like and you don't really see that a lot happen and appear on screen so bravo to fetty on that point but what comes out of dora the explorer in this movie uh this thing looks like it was created to be a creature of nightmares for YouTube children. Um, for like the genre that grew up on Slender Man. Like it just, it doesn't, it didn't look good. It didn't look good. There are some points to where like the, the face reminded me a lot of like the, the main see seers in uh, Prometheus. Like just the white face, black eyeballs, that type of thing. It just, I don't know, something about it is just like, what are we doing? <laughs> I, it, it looked fake the entire damn time. And in a franchise that is kind of staking its claim, especially this entry, staking its claim on, yeah, we have a remote controlled face huggers. We wanted to get, we wanted to use as much practical effects as we possibly could. You crap the bed when it comes to like your biggest new creation on this. And I just, I didn't like the way that it looked. I didn't like what happened with that entire thing. It's just, I don't know, uh, that that was a big swing and a miss for me as well. Plus, you're just like playing the hits again with, you know, Alien, Sigourney Weaver. Ripley's character was in like her um, sleeping uh, gar garm? garment, gar sleeping garb, something like that. She was in her sleeping clothes. She was in the panties and the the just the white shirt you know they kind of do this again to where like the third act oh we gotta kind of take from what's happened in the past and just have her dressed kind of like what ripley was dressed as it just felt hollow this whole movie just felt hollow didn't feel like it had an original thought in its body which that's what's bugging me the most about this it's just trying to theme park its fears it's a uh, I, I don't know i i i was so bummed by the end of this movie that I'm just like, I <laughs> I really hope that Fetty does not make another one, but I know it's making a lot of money. I want to say worldwide, it made $100 million opening weekend and the budget was $80 million, which means if it triples that budget, it'll be well in the black. And that's all, all you can ask for. It's just studios are looking for properties and IPs that make money at the end of the day. And I feel like this one is going to be pretty dang profitable for Disney in a uh, 20th century. I uh, helped with that, with uh, getting the popcorn bucket. I still love this sucker. I just don't love how it says Alien Romulus on the bottom now. Because now forevermore, if I ever pick this sucker up and uh, I see on the back like, oh, it was for that movie. I'm just gonna be bummed. I'm gonna be, that, that's what I can't get over is just, I wanted to love this movie because I enjoy the Alien franchise because it tries to break new ground. Say what you will about Prometheus and Covenant. At least it had like interesting ideas around them. I am personally a Prometheus lover and I feel like Covenant is a step down from that, but it's still like the same train of thought. I thought Ridley Scott did a very good job with both of those films. Alien, of course, is a sci-fi classic. Aliens is what Alien Romulus felt like it wanted to be badly. It's just like, okay, take 
multiplication thing. Like there's always there's been this story forever of uh, James Cameron pitching the movie for Aliens, and he just writes an S at the end and a dollar sign because he's just like, yes, we will just multiply this, and it'll make a lot of money. It'll multiply the box office as well. I want to say like that's kind of the the thread, the through line that Betty was trying to do here is just like, okay, we're gonna make this as fun and fast and upbeat as possible. Just not let the audience have a second to breathe and for me it just felt more hollow than it did wholesome I, I guess there's just not it felt thin it, it just did not I didn't like it I, I that's all that's all I can say and I really wish I did and normally stuff like that doesn't bother me as much as it did with this movie in particular with this franchise in particular and I don't hold the alien franchise like highly coveted it's a great sci-fi franchise, don't get me wrong, but Alien 3 is a turd sandwich, Alien uh, Revelations, Alien 4, Alien uh, Alien 4, whatever 4 is. It, it, it's so forgettable, I forgot the tagline. Resurrections, that's what it is, Alien Resurrections. That one was not good either. So this is probably, like, better than 3. Maybe on uh, same par as 4 for me. Um, I don't know. I, I'm just bummed, and I really hope Fetty will do something else. I... I feel like he's, he put his stamp on this franchise. I wasn't a fan of the stamp and hopefully he can put his stamp on something else. And hopefully I am right back on board. There were a lot of good points in this movie. I just think as a whole, the only thought that I'm left with is that, wow, I just, um, everything felt hollow. I, I did not care about anything that was happening in this movie. And uh, that's not a good thing when you're trying to create a film, especially a franchise with characters that you've cared about. I don't, I don't know. That's just me. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. I feel like I was just droopy dog. I, I, I was trying to like come in like ranting to be like, I hate this movie. And I'm just underwhelmed by the movie. Um, I'll throw my letterbox review over here. I gave it a 2 out of 5. Me talking through it like this, it might be a 2.5 out of 5, somewhere around there. But I don't recommend the movie. I I, 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 I will rewatch it at some point, but for the time being, I just want this sucker to be in my rear view as far back as it possibly can. Um, maybe when I'm wanting a uh, thrill ride amusement park attraction, I will pop this on, but I... I wanted more. I wanted more from Alien Romulus, and it just didn't deliver to me. But let me know what you thought about this movie in the comments. Thanks for watching, and until next time, I'll see you. Well, congratulations, everybody. You made it to the after credit scene of my rant review tear down of Alien Romulus. I'm not quite sure how that went. Um, I, I, I feel like I, I have more thoughts to say. I just can't relay them the way that I really wanted to. I should write a script out for this stuff, number one. But number two, my question for you, if you've gotten this far, is has there ever been a entry in a franchise that people really enjoy that you just don't? Because I feel like that is me in a nutshell with this. Again, I've seen a lot of positive reviews for this movie. I have not seen a lot of negative, honestly. I've seen like probably a fourth negative, three-fourths positive. Um, just wanted to like this a lot more. And I guess to end the video, I got to take the face hugger, the, the, the plush that I got from a loot crate like six years ago. And uh, he's, he, he's going to eat you. Watch out, watch out. Bye-bye!